friends, what's going on everyone? My name's Kai, welcome to the channel. Consider subscribing, it helps my channel grow. Okay guys, uh, today I wanna talk about uh, something that has been really bothering me for the last week. Um, guys, I have been severely depressed for the last week and it's been really, really rough, you know? Uh, here I am in Japan, I'm living my dream, I have my own apartment, I'm living with my girlfriend. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, it, it's amazing, yet I'm depressed, you know? And I just wanted to let you guys know that first of all, depression doesn't take a vacation, you know? That's something that I learned big time when uh, when my girlfriend came to Canada and visited me. I, I stupidly stopped taking my depression medication because I felt, hey, I'm, I'm so happy. I don't need my depression medication anymore, right? Um, that's so silly though, that you always gotta take it. And I've been taking my medication lately, but over the last week, I've been having some of the worst nightmares that I've ever had in my life. And if you follow the channel, um, you'll know that I suffer from severe, severe, severe nightmares, right? And, um, the other night, I have something that, that cr absolutely crazy happened to me. Um, I've been sleepwalking, and now I sleepwalk a lot. It, it's something that is, is completely normal for me. Um, I would say that out of a week, I probably sleepwalk out of four nights. Four nights out of the seven nights, I'm probably sleepwalking. And the thing is, sometimes my sleepwalking um, can get me into a lot of trouble, you know? A couple months ago, I posted a video on my channel about how I sleptwalked to the convenience store that's around the corner from my apartment, and it was the middle of the winter, I was in my pajamas, I was only wearing slippers, right? And I walked all the way to the convenience store. Well, something like that happened to me again. Something like, but it, it could have been catastrophic, what happened. Um, basically, right down... Um, right down the stairs from my apartment is a subway entrance. It's very close, you know? And uh, the other night, I slept, walk I slept walked down onto the subway, and I was, uh, this is apparently what the, uh, the police told me because I woke up in a Koban, which is like a police box, right? And basically, I had walked down into the subway, I had gotten onto the subway, and when I'm on the subway, um, I have ADHD, right? So it's very hard for me to just sit down and, and wait for my next stop. Uh, so what I do is I walk between the cars. I, I walk between the cars, I walk, I go to the, to the one end, I touch it, and then I walk all the way through the train to the other end, and I touch it, and, and I walk back and forth. That's what I do just to pass the time and to stay active, because I really don't like sitting down. Even when I'm sitting down like this, I've got my legs shaking and everything, I don't like sitting still. Um, so in my sleepwalking, that's what I was doing. I, I was literally just walking back and forth uh, through the through the subway, right? Through the, through the train car itself. And after I did this for apparently like 45 minutes to an hour, um, people started to think like, what's this guy doing? Like it looked suspicious. It looked like maybe I was um, scoping the place out. It looked suspicious, right? So I woke up in the Koban. I woke up with, with police officers around me. And I had no fucking idea what I was gonna do, right? I had no idea where I was. Um, I have this. This is my, um, this is my, um, this is my translator. Didn't even work properly. I didn't have my translator with me, you know? And I was just in my sleep clothes. <laughs> Again, with the slippers, right? So, uh, I had to figure out a way to explain. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, I'm having these nightmares, I'm going out in public while I'm sleeping, and it's scary, you know? It's scary, because I could have easily walked onto the train tracks, I could have easily... There, there, who knows what I could have done in my sleep? And it's really, really scary. A and if you guys don't believe me on that, um... If you learn a little bit more about sleepwalking, you would be 
incredibly surprised on what you can do while you're sleepwalking. For example, uh, I think in 1980, I used to study law, right? Um, and when we, when we studied laws, we would have to study certain cases. And being from Canada, um, we, we studied a few like high profile uh, murder cases, high profile kidnapping cases. We, we studied a lot of these high profile things, right? And there was a story, and I believe it was 1988, but in Toronto, there was a man who sleptwalked out of his house he drove from Toronto to Oakville, which is about an hour and a half, right? And he drove there while he was sleep while he was sleepwalking, and he went into his uh, step family's house and he killed them all, right? And he was still sleeping. And then after that, he drove himself from the house to the police station. And when he got to the police station, um, he had the knife that he used embedded in his hand. It was, it was so deep in his hand that it was stuck to his hand, right? And he only woke up at the police station right and this is a real real thing that happened if you if you if you're curious about it just google um toronto man sleepwalk murder right and i'm sure that the story will come up but i just want to show you guys that like there is such an amount of things that you can do while you're sleepwalking and it's been very depressing it's been very depressing because not only do i have these horrible nightmares that i've been dealing with but now <clears throat> My sleepwalking has gotten so bad that I'm going out into public. And now when I when I'm getting ready for bed, when when I'm when I'm anticipating sleep, not only am I worrying am I going to have a nightmare tonight? Am I going to have to wake up in the middle of the night and have a shower? Am I going to have to wake up in the middle of the night and wash my sheets, you know? Um and now I have to worry about, am I going to walk out into the middle of the street at night? Am I going to whatever, you know? And it's been really depressing, and I've been getting barely any sleep, sleep whatsoever. Over the last week, I would say that I've been sleeping for probably 14 hours a day because I'll fall asleep, let's say for six hours, right? And I'll have such a bad nightmare that when I wake up, I have to wash my blankets. I have to wash, like right now, there's no, there's no pillowcases on my pillows because they're all in the wash, you know? And it just sucks because during that six hours, I'm not getting any rest. So I'll wake up and um, I'll need to go right back to bed. And I'll have another nightmare. And it's just, it's just so frustrating. And I felt, so, I, and I've been feeling so down. Like I have been trying my best to vlog as much as I can, as much as I possibly can. And I love vlogging. Like the thing is with my vlogging, it's not like something that's detrimental. It's not something that I don't like. It's not something that I feel obligated to. It's not something that, you know, I feel pressured into doing. It's something that I genuinely enjoy, right? But I haven't been able to vlog properly in a week and it sucks because I really want my my series to go on for an entire year. I want it to be 52 episodes long and I've wasted now an entire week without doing it, you know? Um, one of my vlogs that will be uploaded probably, uh, probably mid-April, maybe early May, um, it was supposed to be a vlog that was just, hey, we're going to hang out in this area during the day, and we're going to hang out in this area during the night. And it took me three separate nights to actually get the courage to go out at night. You know, I did film it, but it took so long. And I just feel bad. And I wanted to let you guys know that I'm feeling really down, and it's all because of my nightmares, and it's all because of my sleep, and... If you guys have any recommendations for me, I would really appreciate it. Um, I know that there's certain things that I need to do to cut out. Like, I know that drinking a lot of sugary drinks does not help. I know that um, maybe eating a big meal before bed doesn't help either. Um, maybe I should be exercising more. But I'm walking, you know, 15,000 steps a day. Like, I, I get good exercise. I'm in good shape. Um, I'm not overeating this time. I don't know. But... 
I just wanted to let you guys know that, like, it's okay to be depressed, right? I, I don't want... I'm not trying to make this video as a, like, feel bad for me kind of thing. Not by any means. I'm trying to show you guys that, like, it's okay. It's okay to feel like this, you know? So I've been beating myself up because it's like, go make vlogs, go make vlogs. You're only here for 90 days. If you don't get this stuff done, you can't do anything, blah, blah, blah. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. And it's like, every day... I've been putting this pressure on myself, and I just need to say, listen, Kai, if you need to take some time, just do it, you know? Just take some time for yourself. Don't worry about um, making vlogs. Don't worry about all of this stuff. Just chill out and play some video games and hang out. You know what I mean? Um, with my gaming, um, I've really lost touch with my own personal gaming because I stream so much. Um, I've been streaming video games for quite a while, and it's gotten to the point where I don't really play video games if I'm not streaming, right? Because I kind of feel like it's a waste of time um, because I could be playing it live, which would be adding hours to my watch time, which would be helping uh, to get me monetized, you know what I mean? Um, but I haven't just sat down, chilled out, you know, with a, with a, container, of, with a container of candy, and just chilled and played video games on my own, right? So what I'm trying to say with this video is even if you're on vacation, you, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to chill and you need to take time for yourself, you know? You don't need to let the pressure of, hey, I'm on vacation and I'm only here for X amount of time. Because the thing is, it doesn't matter if you go out. It doesn't matter because you're still going to feel that way you know? And what I've been doing is I've been pushing myself to go out and do things even though all I want to do is just relax at home, play some video games, have a bath, kind of, kind of stuff like that. So I just want to encourage you guys, you know, if you are on vacation, you still need to take time for yourself, you know? If you are, like, it's hard to it's hard for me to convey my point, but I just wanted to let you guys know, like, it's totally okay to be depressed, but you know what's not okay? It's not okay to take that depression and try and bury it and try and ignore it because it'll just get worse and worse and then it'll bottle up and you'll feel and, and a big explosion will happen and you'll, you'll just feel like garbage about it, you know? So, yeah, I'm sorry that this video is a little rambly, I, I just wanted to talk to you guys personally um, because I want I, I also wanted to let you guys know that like I'm I'm a real human right I'm not a I'm not a huge famous YouTuber I love making YouTube videos but this isn't my job I don't get paid for this I've I've never made a dollar from YouTube right so I don't I need to stop putting this pressure on myself like oh if I don't make this video I'm not going to be able to pay rent or or if I don't make this video I'm gonna let down millions of people because I, I love you guys like like my subscribers I really really appreciate you guys I really do um, but what, what am I trying to say stop putting pressure on yourself Stop putting pressure on yourself to do things that you might feel um, are detrimental. You know, like, like just, now I'm just going on and on. I don't have many people to talk to in my life, right? So it's been really nice live streaming and talking with you guys and being able to open up with you guys because in my life, I, I, don't, I don't have many people. You know, I love my dad very much. My dad does not understand mental health whatsoever. So I really can't talk to him about things. And even if I do talk to him about things, um, he disregards a lot of what I say. Um, for example, I'm legally disabled, right? Um, and I'm disabled because of my mental health. I'm not disabled because I have broken legs or I have, or I have a bad back or anything like that. I'm disabled because of my mental health. And the thing is, I'll tell my dad, it's hard to live with this disability. And my dad will kind of laugh at me. And he'll be like, oh, you're not disabled. Oh, you know, you can walk just fine. Like, 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 he's got this really old mentality. And it's like, 
it's like, buddy, what, what do I need to show you to, to show you that I'm disabled? Right. I have, a, I, I have, um, I have my, like my doctor, I'm, I'm considered disabled by my doctor. Right. I take like a buttload of medications every day. Um, because of my severe anxiety and my depression, I can't do normal things that, that normal people do. Like, what do I need to do, right? So I can't really talk to my dad about that stuff. And, uh, my sister, she gets it, but my sister's a very busy person, and I don't, and she's got her own problems, and I don't feel like burdening her with my own stuff, right? So, it's been an absolute blessing being able to talk to you guys, and being able to stream and open up and everything, so I just wanted to say thank you. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I really do, you know? My mom was my biggest supporter in the whole world. Um, she would help me with anything, you know, even when I got wrapped up with like gang stuff, um, she helped me get out of it, you know? Um, so with my mom, I could talk to her about anything and I could open up to her about anything. And I lost my mom a few years ago, right? And then when I lost my mom, my grandmother, who also raised me very much, I've told you guys that I used to live half in the ghetto and half in suburbia, right? So my grandmother raised me almost as much as my mom and dad did, right? So when my mom passed away, my grandmother really took on the role of being my mom. And I could talk to her. I could talk to her about anything. Um, she was the one who sent me to rehab and saved my life. So I love her so much. Oh, actually, you know what? Check this out. Here she is. Here she is. <laughs> Hi, Oma. Um, she passed away, too. And now I just don't really have that support system. So I just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate you guys. It means a lot to me. And uh, just try and take care of yourself. Just try and take care of yourself. And uh, if people don't understand your mental... Uh, I don't want to say deficiencies, but your mental problems, right? If people don't understand that then you need to surround yourself with people who do understand it, right? That's it. Um, I'm going to quit rambling because this video, it doesn't really have any direction. I just wanted to open up and talk to you guys about a couple scary things that have been happening to me. Um, guys, I really appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>